Now, we all want to be treated like an elite when we stay at these high-end hotels. But not all of us want to get these super high tier credit cards or spend a bunch of money on these cards or spend an absurd number of nights in these high end hotels because it's expensive. So how can we get these nice perks without necessarily needing elite status? Today, we're going to talk about hotel preferred partner programs. My name is Sean and I'm here with my co-host. Hi, everyone. I'm Sherwin, the other half of the Credit Card BS podcast. And today we're going to be discussing what I think is an underrated service people should look into. Uh, preferred hotel partner programs. Um, as Sean mentioned, this is a way uh, you can book through a specific channel to get elite-like perks, but without needing to have status with the hotel chain. Um, so Sean, right off the bat, what kind of perks are we talking about? Yeah, so this varies usually from property to property and which preferred partner program you're booking with, but usually what you'll see is some type of a credit per stay, usually about a hundred US dollars worth, whether that's the dining, the spa, or the property, it depends. Uh, a one category upgrade, some kind of like late checkout, early check-in. Uh, the upgrades and checkout times are subject to availability. And then free breakfast as well. And that's usually is full breakfast uh, for two guests per room is usually the standard. And so it's a pretty nice range of perks. I mean, it's pretty similar to what you're getting with most elite statuses. Uh, the exception, of course, being is that the upgrade that you're you know, eligible for is usually one category as opposed to like being up to suites, which you may be eligible for with elite status. I mean, it still depends on the property though. I've seen data points yes. of certain properties going above and beyond to upgrade people to much higher tier rooms. Yes, I've heard of that too, where you could get sometimes, you know, uh, these high end bookings can get some pretty nice rooms uh, well beyond one category. It just really depends on like the property and the date, similar to similar to like how elite status works, right? Where it's like, just because you're eligible for suites doesn't mean you always get a suite. And just because you're only eligible for standard suites doesn't mean you only get standard suites. It really just depends. Yeah. So, I mean, th this sounds pretty cool. Like uh, um, you can get these set of benefits just by booking through these channels and, you know, you don't really have to be loyal to that hotel chains. So what's the catch? Are the rates more expensive? Um, you know, do you have to be have certain memberships to book it? Sean, why don't you tell us about those details? So yeah, the caveats are one, you cannot use this with points. Uh, if you could use it with points, that'd be very nice. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be doing a lot of points stays more and getting a lot of free stuff. You have to do cash. And the rates are not necessarily more expensive, but it is going to be usually equal to the standard rate of the hotel. So when you're, let's say, searching on Hyatt, you'll see like member rate, you'll see standard rate, you might see some specialty rates. It's going to be equal to the standard rate. Now, the thing it, I'll say is like there are sometimes promotions, whether you see it on like MXFHR is one of these preferred partner programs or Hyatt Privé, where it's like stay three nights, four nights, get a night free. So there are certain cases in which actually booking one of these preferred partner programs would actually be cheaper than booking with the hotel directly on like a member rate. Uh, usually you'll see a slight, you know, from a standard rate to a member rate, you'll usually see that the standard rate is slightly more. But the idea being that, like, if the standard rates, you know, very marginally more, if not the same as a member rate, the perks would offset that fee significantly, right? If I had to pay 20 bucks more to get a $100 dining credit, very, very happily will do that. It, but so, yeah, usually the rates, uh, it, it just, again, as some of these other things, it will depend on the property. Yes. Yeah. I also find it most likely worth it for myself, um, especially if it's a short stay, usually the credits as well as the breakfast have so much tangible value that will happily pay the standard rate over the member rate, assuming it's not like an egregious jump. Um, and also one thing to know is that you can usually stack your perks with elite benefits and earn points. So for example, if it's a Hyatt hotel and you have Hyatt status or, or earn Hyatt points, uh, you can put in your number and you'll accrue elite night credits and actually not only receive the benefits of your status at the hotel, but also receive the benefits of booking through these preferred partners as well. Uh, you know, Marriott, IHG, usually uh, Hilton, these chains all, you can kind of double dip in a sense on both these preferred partner benefits as well as your status benefits. Yeah. And that's, I think for me, that was something like when learning about these programs is like so important because you know, if I can book with a, like, if I could book at these perks, but it's like, oh, I'm not getting my globalist perks or whatever, it would kind of be like, ah, uh, that's a shame, right? I have to weigh it. 
So being able to stack those is really, really nice. I will say like for MGM properties specifically, it, they're weird. Uh, you can't really stack MGM like resort fee waived perks with these preferred pro programs, which is a shame. Oh. But other than that, it seems that like across the board, you can stack elite perks with these preferred programs, which is really, really cool. I think that's like something super, yeah. super important and, and makes it more valuable to me. Yeah, I mean, the hotels do treat this as if it were a direct booking. In fact, probably better than a direct booking because it's like a preferred program. So it's not like I'm going on Expedia booking it and then I'm going to get uh, a room on the second floor facing the parking lot because they don't care about my status. Like, no, this is like legit recognized by the hotel chains as a preferred partner direct with them. Um, that sense. So it's... That's a, yeah, it's, it's a really yeah. good point. Because it, you're right. It is treated like higher than a standard booking. Like if you would, you'd rather be a globalist staying on a prevay reservation than a globalist standing staying on like a member rate reservation. Uh, just because it's kind of considered a more premium tier rate. Uh, yeah, it's it's considered direct yeah. for all that, which is really nice. Um, yeah. So so Sean, how can one book these? So uh, my, to my understanding, generally, uh, you know, they're not directly uh, available online. Like go to Hyatt.com and you book a hotel. So how can one book through these programs and get these benefits? Yeah, so you cannot book, as you said, direct with any of these hotel websites. Uh, you need to book via some preferred partner. Usually that looks like some kind of a travel advisor, travel agent that has access to these programs. There are certain ones that are bookable online, like most notably Amex FHR. If you have an Amex Platinum card uh, or Business Platinum or Centurion, if you have that, you can book these programs or certain hotels that are affiliated with FHR online directly. If you don't have that, or if you're trying to book a hotel which isn't affiliated with FHR or trying to use a different program, right? Like Hyatt Privé, Four Seasons Preferred Partner, then you need to book via a travel advisor that has access to those perks. Yes, and I would also recommend people looking to this to like pay attention to the policies that different travel advisors have for example, certain travel advisors will charge you booking fees or change and cancellation fees that are separate and apart from what the hotel charges or what the preferred program charges, whereas other travel advisors do not charge those fees. Um, so it's worth you know comparing your options there. And I also that's a very good point. And I also think it's important to not just compare that like the advisors, but compare the programs because. For example, someone might be deciding, okay, there's a really nice Hyatt I want to stay at. It's Park Hyatt. Should I book through Amex FHR or should I book through Hyatt Privé? And, you know, it can depend on the stay because sometimes it can be the case that maybe FHR is offering a higher credit than Hyatt Privé. Or it could be the case that Privé is offering a promotion where the rate ends up being a little cheaper. Uh, as a general, like, trend, what we will see is that hotels will prioritize upgrades for people that book within that hotel specific program. So theoretically speaking, if you have two reservations, one that's FHR and one that's Hyatt Privé, the Hyatt hotel would be more likely to upgrade the Privé reservation. I guess Privé is, a, we'll go with it for a second, but Privé is a bad example here, but they'd be more likely to upgrade Privé than FHR. And the reason I say Privé was a bad example there is Privé, well, most of these programs are one category upgrades subject to availability. Hyatt Privé is very unique in the fact that when you book, if there's a one category upgrade open, it is supposed to be confirmed within 24 hours of booking the hotel, which is very nice. So you could book like a year out, you could book a, you know, a room and you'd say, okay, I'm getting a one category guaranteed upgrade, which is very, very nice because other programs don't necessarily do that. Uh, but for example, like Four Seasons Preferred Partner, upgrades not guaranteed, MX FHR, upgrades not guaranteed. Theoretically at a Four Seasons Hotel, the preferred partner Four Seasons would be prioritized. Now, in practice, can I guarantee, like, you know, you can't necessarily always see how that plays out, but most likely the Four Seasons would be prioritized. Yes, I think the high Privé thing is really nice because it's, again, it's like a confirmed upgrade. One strategy some people do and that I recommend in certain places is if there's like a root room type or suite that you really want, and let's say like the category below is significantly cheaper because that's like a big jump it may make sense to book the category right below it um, to expect that one category upgrade to the room you want. again no guarantee and like if you do it and it doesn't work because 
they were sold out that day. It's kind of tough luck. But, you know, with higher prefit, you can basically guarantee it through the travel advisor. Um, I think another difference with FHR, American Express Fine Hotels and Resorts, with these programs is FHR guarantees 4 p.m. late checkout always, whereas these programs depends. I've gotten pretty good luck with um, these programs like Virtuoso getting 4 p.m. late checkout in some of these properties, but like Amex is more set in stone, like guaranteed 4 p.m. late checkout, mandatory, not a question about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's something that I definitely like, I found pretty interesting with Amex is the fact that you never have to worry about, you know, oh, are they going to do it or not? Like it's it's set. They have to do it. Uh, I mean, definitely. the thing with FHR though is you do need to have American Express Platinum or Business Platinum card to have access to FHR. Whereas, you know, if you book through one of these preferred hotel, other preferred hotel programs you talked about, you don't necessarily have to have any type of specific credit card as long as um, you can access one of the agents. Exactly. And there's also one advantage of preferred partners is the fact that they may have a broader selection. So like Amex FHR is, you know, very, very concentrated at the high end, which most of these programs are, but like Hyatt Privé, you can book a lot of hotels in Hyatt Privé that are not bookable in FHR. And so you'll have to, you know, the selection is something interesting as well. And I, I will want to make a note for the upgrade thing, how it works is like, it's one category, but they o there's always exceptions to that rule. So let's say, for example, it's like I book, let's say I'm staying at some hotel. And for some reason, this hotel has two categories of suites, a standard suite, which is 500 bucks a night and an uber mega presidential royal suite that is $20,000 a night. And I'm, let's say it's a Hyatt and I book the, you know, one the standard suite. It is, you have to confirm with the property or the privé advisor, whoever you're doing it, that the one category upgrade is not an exception there uh, because there are exceptions. And so you need, you know, now, but you are right. You can definitely still game it. There are definitely some nice ways to say like, oh, I'm going to get a pretty significant one category upgrade just by booking the category below. But it's not like the thing where I can just take advantage of the fact that it's like some boutique property that only has two categories of room or something. Um, so just always always confirm with your you know previous advisor or the property or just to have an understanding of what the eligible upgrade would be. Yes. Um, another cool thing is you can actually apply a Hyatt Suite upgrade awards earned through the milestone rewards um, directly to previous days uh, because they are treated as a proper direct booking within the system. So that's as I said, you know there are ways to double dip your benefits. If you happen to both be loyal to program and book through one of these advisors. Another tip I'd have is usually the $100 or so property credit. Uh, sometimes it's food and beverage, sometimes it's spa. But that credit is once per stay, not once per night. So theoretically, the way to game it is to book a one night stay or mm -hmm. some kind of short duration stay. Um, and like, don't try to do multiple one night bookings that are adjacent because most likely the hotel at the same property. Like... You can do yes. different properties, but at sure. the same property, that's a no no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you do the same property, like, most likely the hotel will just merge it together and you'll only get one credit. I mean, there are exceptions. I've seen counter data points, but I wouldn't like expect that to work. Yeah, one tip as well, and I've done this before, where let's say it's the case where it's like, the difference in rate between like the member rate and the standard rate is small enough that the credit would offset it like for that one night, but you'd want to do like a multi-night booking. One thing you can do, especially if you're not like trying to apply a suite upgrade or anything, you could book like one night at the prevay rate or the preferred partner rate, right? The standard rate, get that credit. And then the remaining stay at whatever rate you want. And that way it's like, you're not going to get in trouble for back to back things like that, because they're only going to still give you one credit, right? And it's still valid because it's like, well, I just booked one night at that rate. And as long, and they may, they may be sticklers like, oh, you have to use the credit the first night or whatever, but fine, just use it the first night. And so that way it's like, you can still game it a bit. You can still, let's say only pay $20 more for all those perks, as opposed to having, you know, if the, if there's a different, a big difference in rate available. And that's something I've done before, like at the Regency Waikiki, we booked a couple nights on Prive and then some nights on like a member rate. Cause that was like cheaper. And so that is a cool way to still get it without getting in trouble for trying to do back-to-back -back bookings. But on the note of back-to-back -back bookings, I love doing that at certain places like Vegas, where there'll be these high-tier hotels 
that aren't that expensive. And what you can do is you can just go like, okay, I'm going to go spend a night at the Bellagio. Then I'm going to go spend a night at the Cosmopolitan. And every night you're getting like a hundred dollar credit. Usually it depends on the property, but you get like a hundred dollar credit. And so that's something like really good. And as like a specific example is like, I, you know, found a rate at the Bellagio two sixteen a night all in, and you get a hundred dollar dining credit. Uh, you know, the cat- one category upgrade, like checkout availability, whatever. But you also get two uh, free breakfast per room, like two guests. And so it's like, wow, you pay 216 bucks, but you're getting like 115 or $150 of food, basically. You know, if you're yeah. if you're hopping every day in Vegas, it's like, wow, my hotel, by just paying for my hotel, I'm able to pay for all of my food as well. Yeah, I love doing hotel hopping at Vegas. I actually just uh, went to... Bellagio a few months ago on a virtuoso rate, which is one of these preferred partner programs. And I was very pleased with how the benefits worked. Uh, you know, my rate was like 160 something before, I mean, before resort fees, and whatever. So, I mean, if you consider the hundred dollar food and beverage credit and the $60 in breakfast I got, you know, you know, I can sort of justify it to myself. I only paid it couple dollars for my room rate um and then i mean the resort fee kind of sucks in vegas but uh yeah this is the other thing to to pay attention to is like if you have like caesar's diamond status or mgm gold in vegas those have waived resort fees whereas if you book through fhr or one of these preferred partner programs most likely you're going to be on the hook for resort fees but um do the math it depends on for this situation it still made sense to book through Virtuoso for Bellagio, even though I had to pay the resort fee, uh, because it was uh, like the hundred dollar food and beverage credit and the sixty dollar breakfast credit more than offset the extra resort fee I had to pay, and um, actually didn't end up having to pay for it because the the pool was closed and I complained about it because like that's literally one of the reasons we pay a resort fee and then they they took it off, so. Um, that worked out really nicely. Uh, that was just my case. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say hey, you can expect <laughs> that to happen for you as well. But um, yeah, I, I I thought it was a very, very good use. And you know, I didn't even have to be loyal to MGM or gamble a lot or be loyal to this hotel. Chain. So you know, I had a very good experience using this service and something I'd highly recommend if you're going to pay cash anyways at a lot of these places. Definitely. And there's a lot of these different programs, right? So there's Hyatt Privé, Marriott Stars, Virtuoso, Four Seasons Preferred Partner, IHG Luxury and Lifestyle, Rosewood. There's a lot of stuff. We'll have like a list in the description of all these. Um, And it really just, you know, Virtuoso is like one similar to like FHR almost where it's like, it's not a chain. It applies to a whole breadth of hotel, you know, various chains. And then like most of these high tier brands have like their own, you know, version of this as well. So it's just the one that you would want to use would kind of entirely depend on like what promotions are going on at the time, what property you want to stay at, stuff like that. Yeah. Also, I think at the end of the day, like how good your experience is going to be is still like dependent on the property. For example, like going back to the Bellagio, I got really lucky because they gave me 4 p.m. late checkout. They gave me an upgrade to a room where it was like facing the fountains. Usually those cost a lot more than uh, than. A room in the back so yeah a lot of it is luck based but like potentially you could get very 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 good value from booking through one of these yeah definitely. it's something that i you know it, it's funny that a lot like a lot of people often want to book through these programs because it's like you get this extra value but it's interesting how it's been kind of like locked away where you know you would think that they want to encourage more people to do it, but like, it's always, you have to contact an advisor. Like there's no way to do it on Hyatt, which is very odd that there's no way like to go on Hyatt. I had to get why, because it's like, well, then everyone would just probably do it and they'd just be losing money. But it's, it's an interesting uh, reason that they've, you know, orchestrated it this way. Yeah. I do think one of the disadvantages is that like you have to go through a travel advisor, but you know, I personally feel like if you know, you're going to be able to get value out of the stay and it's something you would have paid money for anyway like i would still just do it to get those extra benefits exactly and i guess i should plug here this is where i'm gonna throw myself plug so i in the in the discord by the way discord link in the description 
you know, so many people are constantly asking like, oh, who's a good Hyatt Privy advisor? Who's a good virtuoso advisor? And I'm always like sending, I was always previously sending recommendations to various ones that I know of. And I'm like, wait a second. If I know all these people doing these bookings and I use this myself and I, I you know, I don't like, I want to manage it myself as well. Why don't I just get access to this? And so that's what I ended up doing. I now have access to all of these preferred programs. So if anyone watching this video uh, would like help with making one of these bookings, just head to lane.travel. There's a link in the description. Uh, I'll be very, very responsive. And yeah, if you need any help on these bookings, I can help you orchestrate it uh, very quickly. There's no minimum booking requirement. I know some agents have that or like a fee for orchestrating the bookings, nothing like that. Uh, yeah, if anyone's interested, I'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, because I thought like for so long, I've been, you know, always like, oh, I don't know who I wanted to use for Privé and so many people asked about it and all these other programs. It's like, wait a second, I could just do this myself and that would be easier. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely attest Sean is like really responsive to everyone on Discord and that's like a major plus, especially with these programs. I think one of the biggest frustrations I've had or like hesitations to use these programs is like, you know, am I going to have to call up someone and talk to them on the phone or like email them and then wait 48 hours to respond and then by then the rate will have gone up and you know this back and forth is really annoying um so i you know sean could potentially be a good option because like he's on discard almost too much yeah and, uh, <laughs> as, as yeah like that doing this stuff is like his entire life I'm not yeah, I, I have an unhealthy <laughs> obsession with this. And that's the thing as well. Like I've, that was one thing before, like with Privé. That's honestly like part of the reason I wanted to get in, access to this is so I could do my own like Privé bookings because a lot of times it's like I would send out an email and it's like they get back like three days later. And I'm like, I can't rely on that because it's like, what if I want to apply a Hyatt Suite Upgrade Award, right? What if I, what if the rate goes up? What if the one category upgrade goes away? So like, I feel like that's something I would, you know, value a lot is just being fast on this because- it's I when I make a booking, I like to have it done fast. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, so uh, that's our episode on preferred hotel partner programs. Um, again, if you are interested, go ahead and contact Sean. Um, and uh, uh, if you enjoyed today's episode, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to our podcast channel. We're rapidly growing, so it really helps us out. If you're interested in applying for a travel credit card or any credit card for that matter, consider using one of the, our links in the description below. It greatly helps support our channel. And Sean, why don't you plug our Discord? Yeah, so if you want to connect with an elite group of award travelers entirely for free and learn a ton, check out the Traveling Discord group at the link in the description. We have a lot of smart people in there and we drop a lot of deal alerts, so it'd be very helpful. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week.